Hello, my name's Harmi Baines and I'm the OET course director here at West London English School. In this video today, we're going to be looking at listening part C and we're going to be doing a little bit of practice. So listening part C is made up of two longer extracts. These are usually a presentation or an interview. A presentation, I guess, is a little bit more difficult to follow as it's a monologue and just one person speaking. Whereas an interview, I guess it's a bit easier to follow because you do have questions and answers. The testing points, um, attitude and opinion, gist, detail, and also inference. And I guess these kind of skills can really help you. If you want to know more about these, check out our other videos. Um, or check out our courses at WLES.net. We will be talking about these throughout this video. Um, here's an example of um, a listening part C paper. There are six questions normally. Um, at the top you have context and it's really important to take note of the context. Think about who you're, who you're listening to and what are they talking about. So this can really help you. Also take note of whether you're listening to a presentation or an interview. Okay, so we're just going to do a quick task. You're going to see two um, kind of questions at the top. You've got to underline the speaker, the context, and is it a presentation or an interview? Okay, guys, you have 10 seconds. Here are your two questions. Okay, okay, so let's have a look. Question one, you, we had a, a neurologist talking about multiple sclerosis. And in question two, and this was an interview, um, question two, a physiotherapist giving a talk. So giving a talk means it, it is a presentation. And the physiotherapist was talking about treating sciatica. So think about the context and maybe this can help you. You don't have a lot of time in listening part C. You only have 90 seconds to look at your paper before the audio starts. But think about what do you know about neurology or multiple sclerosis because this could help you. What do you know about sciatica or physiotherapy? So really try to use the context as it can really make your life a little bit easier. As well as understanding the context, uh, you need to understand the questions as well. And I would normally underline key words in the questions to help focus my listening. For example, uh, we've got our context here. Um, a cardiologist is going to talk about Chagas disease. In the question, why does Dr. Robson regard Chagas as a neglected disease? I'd probably underline the words why a neglected disease. And that's what you've got to focus your listening on. You need to understand why the speaker thinks Chagas has been neglected. Okay, as well as understanding the question, you also need to underline, understand the answer options. So think about underlining keywords in the answer options as well. Here are the answer options, and I'd probably focus on these words here. Um, most of these words you'll notice are verbs, nouns, and adjectives. And these are the words in English which really carry the meaning. So if you're not sure which words to underline, um, think about underlining the verbs, nouns, and adjectives. We've also got an adverb there in question number one, mainly. Um, in fact, there are some other words relatively I can see in option C. So you might also want to underline um, negative, it might be important, as you can see in option B. Sometimes a preposition might be important. But generally speaking, um, focus on verbs, nouns and adjectives. And let's give this a go. So let's have a quick listen and see if we can get the answer. Why is it referred to as a neglected disease? Chagas is caused by a parasite called Trypanosoma cruzi. Most sufferers become infected when they're bitten by an insect, commonly known as the kissing bug, which mm. carries the parasite. Right. People often don't realize they've been bitten, and during the initial phase of the infection, symptoms are normally mild or absent. Okay. 
70% of those infected never develop complications. For the other 30%, the disease tends to remain silent for a long time, often 30 years, but it eventually enters a chronic phase characterized by serious cardiac, digestive system, and neurological disorders. About 7 million people worldwide are thought to have Chagas, but it attracts relatively little publicity or funding for research. This indifference is largely down to it being primarily a disease of marginalized communities in Latin America where it's endemic. Mm. You need resources to force significant action. Right, I see. Okay, guys, so how did you do? This was the question and the answer options, and you can see the script here. If you do want to read the script, please just pause the video and you can read through it. What I'm going to do is just highlight this part um, of the script. This is what the speaker said. About 17 million, 7 million people worldwide are thought to have Chagas, but it attracts relatively little publicity or funding or for research. This indifference is largely down to it being primarily a disease of marginalized communities in Latin America. So this is really important. You can see here, um, the speaker says this indifference and indifference and neglected disease. Well, it's not a direct synonym, but you can kind of see the connection between the two words. Um, so you know this is really important and the speaker here is directly answering the question. The marginalized communities are the social groups that it affects. A marginalized community, I guess communities of uh, minorities who are on the outside of society. Um, so they're talking about a social group. Okay, so also here, you've got to take care because option B says patients often don't realize they're infected and the speaker did say something about, um, well, it takes, um, the disease tends to remain silent for a long time, often 30 years. But this doesn't answer the question. That's not why the speaker thinks Chagas is neglected. So take care, guys. Even though you hear something in the audio, you can hear one of the options. You see it there on your question paper and you can hear it. It's not actually answering the question. So it's really important to understand and keep in mind the question. Option C, and again, you can see it says, its impact is severe in a relatively small number of cases. And the speaker talks about 70% of people being infected. Um, they never develop complications. It sounds like option C, but again, this isn't why the speaker thinks that Chagas is neglected. So take care, guys. Um, beware of distractors. And that's what they're trying to do. They're trying to distract you here. So you've got to be careful. Okay, so let's do a little bit of practice. And with these questions, you'll have five seconds to read the, the context. They're all from different listenings, I should say. So five seconds to read the context. Think about who you're listening to and what they're talking about. And then 15 seconds to read the questions and the answer options. Okay, good luck. For me, these factors really underline the importance of the community follow-up clinics we have in my area, which address many of these issues in the provision of healthcare for cancer patients. Staff at these clinics see patients during their recovery and only send them back to hospital for treatment if they develop significant new symptoms. Seeing patients in the clinics means that staff get to know each patient and build a relationship with them which enables nurses like me to dispense advice and answer questions. And although we have no firm evidence, staff feel that's far more beneficial to patients than attending a large hospital clinic. So we're hoping more clinics like these can become available.
People generally think of pain as a direct symptom of a problem in the affected area. But pain is an extremely complex subject, and it's one that used to be underrepresented in medical education. Thankfully, that's no longer the case, and doctors now realise that when a patient complains of acute back pain, that pain may not be due to a clear and treatable disease, but that such pain often presents in people with other medical problems, and these need investigation. Although there are distinct types of physical pain, all too often I see sufferers lumped together in one category, which means that unfortunately not all treatments are going to work equally well. For example, we first need to know, is the pain caused by inflammation as opposed to nerve damage? Establishing this makes initial mistreatment far less likely, meaning that treatment is more effective and the risks of long-term problems are reduced. OK, guys, so how did you get on? Uh, let's have a look at the answers. This is the first question. It was a presentation. If you were listening to the whole listening, it would have been a presentation. And speaking was a cancer nurse talking about prostate cancer. If this is a topic which interests you or you know a lot about, perhaps it's an advantage. But even if it isn't, you should still be able to get the answers. Um, let's see how you did. The question, Sandra believes that community follow-up clinics are important because I probably would have underlined these words um, and focused on these words. You can see it's a kind of an opinion question. We need to know Sandra's opinion about why follow-up clinics are important. That's really what we need to focus our listening on. These were the answer options. And again, I would probably underline these words here. They all have the word patient, so you can remove that. That really doesn't help you at all. Um, so you can focus on the other words. That's probably what I would underline. And you got the audio script. Again, guys, if you want to read the audio script, then please just uh, pause the video. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to just go straight to this part here. Staff at these clinics see patients during their recovery and only send them back to hospital for treatment if they develop significant new symptoms. Okay, um, and then she goes on to say, seeing patients in the clinics means staff get to know each patient and build a relationship with them, which enables nurses like me to dispense advice and answer questions. And although we have no firm evidence, staff feel that's far more beneficial to patients than attending a large hospital clinic. Okay, I'm just going to highlight this sentence at the end because the doctor says that's far more beneficial to patients than attending a large hospital clinic. In a way here she's answering the question, but it's a reference word. You can see that reference word, that, and you need to go back and think, well, what is more beneficial to patients? The beneficial things Staff get to know each other, they build a relationship with each other, nurses can give advice and answer questions. So looking at the answer options, you can see actually they're talking about option A, offering a more personal aftercare. So we'll go on to the next question. This is a neurologist um, giving a presentation about the overuse of painkillers. Interesting topic, um, interesting context. Again, if it's something you're familiar with, it may help you. This was the question. Dr. Madison regrets that pain management of acute pain, um, and I probably would have underlined these words, regrets management and acute pain, and that's what we've got to get. We've got to identify what he regrets about acute pain management. These are their answer options. If I try to simplify it by underlining these words, that could help me. Something about it being misunderstood by the general public or that acute pain management receives inadequate attention in its training, in medical training, or that um, management of acute pain, it doesn't distinguish between possible triggers. 
once again, guys, if you want to pause the video here so you can read through the tape script, if that helps, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to highlight this bit apart here. Dr. Madison, Dr. Madison said, pain is an extremely complex subject and it's one that used to be underrepresented in medical education. It does sound like option A, doesn't it? Um, they talk about it being underrepresented, it's a complex subject, but option A talks about it being misunderstood. So it's not the same. Um, so you can rule out, you can actually eliminate option A. If we keep going, the doctor said, when a patient complains of acute back pain, that pain may not be due to a clear and treatable disease, but that such pain often presents in people with other medical problems and these need investigation. Now that sounds a little bit like option B. However, um, option B talks about medical training and that's not really what the doctor says. In fact, there's no mention of medical training. So again, it's slightly inaccurate and you can, again, you can eliminate option B. And really what we've done by elimination is we've ended up at the correct answer. The only answer can be option C. The doctor says, I see sufferers lumped together in one category, which means that unfortunately, not all treatments are going to work equally well. We first need to know, is the pain caused by inflammation as opposed to nerve damage? Establishing, establishing this makes initial mistreatment far less likely. Okay, and you can see he's talking about triggers. Um, establishing this makes initial treatment far less likely. So getting those triggers, is it caused by inflammation or is it caused by nerve damage? But what we've done there, we've actually used process of elimination and this is a useful technique which you can use as well. Sometimes it's hard to try to identify the correct answer, but what you can do is just eliminate the wrong answers and see what you're left with. This is a useful technique also for reading part C as well, and you can also use it in part B of the listening and reading papers. Okay, guys, um, so just to recap on some of the points. So remember, use the context to help you. Really important, don't just go straight to the questions. Make sure you know who you're listening to and what they're talking about and whether it's an interview or um, a presentation. Understand the questions and underline keywords in the questions and also with the answer options as well. Um, and if you're not sure which words to underline, think about nouns, verbs and adjectives. These are usually the words in English which carry the meaning. So underlining words in the questions and answer options to help focus your listening. Remember, signposting can help you, so really understand the question and listen out for signposts. Be aware of synonyms or synonymous language as well, um, as that can really help you. And also be aware of distractors, really take care. Remember that they're, they're constantly trying to distract you. And remember process of elimination as well. It's hard sometimes to get the correct answer, but eliminate the wrong answers and see what you're left with. Okay guys, that's it from me. Thanks for watching. I hope this video was useful. Please like and please do subscribe if you enjoyed this video. If you have your exam coming up, good luck. We wish you all the best. Pleasure working with you guys. Uh, take care.